Hi, welcome to Rotary. Thank you for thanks for coming. Sorry, I can't shake your hand. Hi there. Thanks for coming to Rotary. Um, I know that this is really weird, um, but we're doing the best that we can. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay healthy. We'd like to thank our greeters, Jeff Swan and also Sonea Lund. Welcome Rotarians and guests. We are Rotarians in action and we change lives. I pray that our Rotarians and their family are, are as healthy as can be. Uh, please let us know if there's anything that we can do to be able to help you out during this pandemic. Our music today is a video from Linda Kaminsky. Hello, Downtown Rotary. Today, April 16th, is Emancipation Day. On April 16th, 1862, President Abraham Lincoln signed the District of Columbia Compensated Emancipation Act. The act freed 3,100 slaves in the District of Columbia nine months before President Lincoln issued his broader Emancipation Proclamation. On January 4, 2005, Mayor Anthony A. Williams signed legislation making Emancipation Day an official public holiday. So here is your music video for Emancipation Day. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom. and go home to my Lord and be free. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Ryan Anderson, our invocation. Greetings, Rotarians, my friends. Uh, a few months ago, Mike Johnson asked if I could provide an invocation to, um, to be scheduled about mid-March. 
you know, at the time uh, when I agreed to this, I thought, well, perfect. Mid-March, invocation would occur right in the middle of the NCAA basketball tournament. Um, how could I go wrong calling on us to invoke a spirit of teamwork and sportsmanship and even a little bit of fanaticism for our own favorite teams and players? You know, by the time the decision was made by the, the NCAA to cancel the tournament, I'd already canceled or postponed most of my work-related events and moved our staff to home offices. But the enormity of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, and this might be a little shallow of me, but it really didn't hit me <laughs> until I saw that the tournament was canceled. It, it took me a few moments sitting in my office thinking about it to realize that I wasn't going to be able to cheer on my favorite team, but but it quickly dawned on me that for a little while, as a community and as a globe, there is only now one team. And instead of Zags or Tar Heels, uh, we would be cheering for, for different teams. We'd be cheering for our medical teams. We'd be cheering for our food production teams. And we'd be rooting for our farm workers and our grocery store workers and our delivery drivers and all of the people around the world who keep our food and essential services and our health and safety uh, in, 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 within their view. So I'm grateful for everyone that's doing that and for the essential workers and the medical teams. Um, and I'd ask you all to um, sort of join me in prayer today um, as, as you know, you feel comfortable with that. So um, loving God, you know, thank you for the brave and compassionate team of people working in so many ways to keep us safe during this global crisis. Be with them and guide us to help those in need in our own ways and help us to be fair and compassionate and brave and to continue our work of service above self now and moving forward. Amen. We miss you. Uh, I miss being able to get together in our traditional meetings. We can't wait to be able to get back together again soon in person. Once again, we want to thank Dwayne Monick for his work on being able to get our presentation, our meetings on Zoom, as well as to YouTube and also to Facebook. Dwayne, you mean a lot to us. We have a great program for you today. Jeffrey, who is our district zone director, who was supposed to be with us on that Thursday at our centennial celebration, is going to join us for an important message about what we have accomplished in our first 100 years of the Yakima downtown Rotary and what his view is of Rotary in the future. So I hope that you look forward to being able to hear this program is going to be great. Thank you. Your Rotary Board has submitted a grant to Rotary District that was approved. Uh, it was for $500 and we were given it to the Yakima Rotary Food Bank and the Yakima Memorial Hospital for PPE. It was initially for $500, but from my president's fund, I decided that I would make it an even thousand. And then after much consideration, I decided to match it at a thousand for each one of them. So we're matching it three times, three to one, uh, and you'll be hearing a lot more about that in the next couple of weeks. President-elect Jennifer Bliesner with a new member introduction. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. It's great to be in front of you in this virtual environment. Our Rotary business continues, and today we have the opportunity to introduce our newest Rotarian, Josh Burrell. Josh was born in Yakima in 1987. His parents were Bobby and Lori Burrell. And he grew up as my next door neighbor, hunting and fishing, riding motorcycles, swimming, playing football and basketball. He attended the Yakima School District for a short time, but he graduated from SELA in 2006. He bought his first home at the young age of 23, and that's when he fell in love with the real estate industry. He worked as a carpenter in many of the homes in Yakima Valley, and he obtained his real estate license and started working in real estate in 2014. 
He is an accredited buyer's representative, and he has served on the Yakima Association of Realtors Board of Directors and the Education Committee. He married his high school sweetheart, Brittany, and the two of them have two adorable daughters, Cadence and Bobby. Please join me with a virtual standing ovation to welcome our newest Rotarian, Josh Burrell. Josh, when we get back together, you'll get the real deal, but today I'm going to go ahead and gift you some fantastic Rotary items. The blue notebook full of all of your fellow Rotarians' names and addresses and contact information as well as a plaque for your wall and the coveted Rotary Yakima or Yakima Rotary license plate frame. Welcome to Rotary. Thank you for the warm welcome. I look forward to meeting everybody. Jim Berg, our Sergeant of Arms. Good morning or good afternoon, uh, Yakima Rotarians. Um, this is Jim Berg. I am uh, um, responsible for, I guess, what we would call the third edition of the uh, pandemic uh, Sergeant at Arms. Um, I'm glad to be here. I, uh, I hope uh, you are all well and healthy, uh, and if not healthy, recovering. Um, I do want to say that uh, uh, I uh, am so impressed with Eric and his, uh, and his board uh, and assistance in, in uh, continuing uh, to try to put forth a, a rotary program. As a past president, I can tell you that this is the, um, you know, but for what's going on now, this is the bread and butter time for a, uh, a president. Uh, he or she has gotten their legs throughout the year, the, a lot of fun stuff going on in the spring, and, and I feel badly that Eric is not able to fully enjoy that because he has certainly done a wonderful job, but uh, that's just the way things are, and I guess we're all having to uh, uh, make some substantial changes, but hopefully we'll have a little fun today. Uh, talking about me. Now, I am uh, getting a little ahead of myself because the program that, uh, the, the Sergeant Arm program that um, I'm delivering here was intended to be delivered about a year or a month and a half ago. It was, uh, I was scheduled to be in charge of uh, uh, Sergeant Arms during the time that Trevor Green spoke. And um, uh, Trevor was, uh, was speaking, there was an awful lot of stuff that uh, uh, was scheduled uh, uh, to occur during that meeting. And as it turned out, uh, if I was going to go on at the very end, right before Trevor spoke, he would have had about three minutes to uh, to speak. So I I said that you know maybe maybe we should try to put me off, and, and, and Eric agreed with that. And so, um, um, but in putting that together, I was trying to figure out what the theme would be, as as most sergeant arms try to do, and I didn't really want to encroach into Trevor's uh, program. And so I uh, tried to come up with something and I thought, well, gosh, why don't, I, why don't we do it about me? And uh, I had a little trepidation about that because I was concerned that uh, that might not be well received. And of course, many of you know that I've done the, the uh, um, Game of Thrones themed one, which did not go over very well. And I think I did another one that was only marginally successful. And so there was some concern about having the, uh, the program about me. And in fact, I asked my wife about it. and. And she was appalled that it would uh, do something about about me. She said, "Are you going to get up and boast uh, about yourself? That's not going to be very good." And I said, "Well, you know, there's an awful lot of stuff that I've done in my life that I would tell about that would be far from boasting." And I I mentioned you know one thing to her, and she had a little smile on her face, and she said, "Well, yeah, I guess that's right." So she started giving me some other examples uh, that I might use that would be not boasting, and so. What was originally, uh, um, uh, she was very, very concerned about it and, and opposed to it. She was warming to it. Before I knew it, she had, she had blown past, uh, past warming to it and was really um, uh, overly enthusiastic. And I began to think, you know, I think you're getting a little overboard and coming up with all of these things about what I have done or not done in my life that are not boastful. But we decided to go forward with it. And so what I've done is we have, uh, uh, with the help of Dwayne Monick, who is the producer uh, of this little show, we have a slide deck that we're going to use, um, which uh, basically asks some questions about me and gives three or four or five options on what the answer is for. And these are things that have happened in my life that uh, are assuredly not boasting, um, that are uh, in some ways humorous and, and uh, uh, to the extent you can get the right answer, you can avoid a fine. If you can't get a right answer, you can't. You uh, don't avoid the fine. And um, but of course, we don't have the tip jar that uh, that Neil Springer apparently uh, uh, referred to last 
last week, but I would ask that you be willing to send some money into Carolyn if uh, if you um, uh, realize that uh, you should be, should have paid because you didn't know the answer to these questions. So, but the first question is: In what countries did I live from age six weeks to three years? England or Scotland? Philippine or Borneo? Mexico and Guatemala? Or Brazil and Argentina? And I'll give you three nanoseconds to answer before I tell you what it is. And it's uh, the Philippines and Borneo. When I was uh, uh, just even before I was born, my father, who was a forestry engineer, worked for a company that imported Philippine mahogany into the United States. And so we moved uh, to Philippines for two years and Borneo for one year. And I remember absolutely nothing about it, except apparently I got rickets. So moving to the next question, what characteristics link the elementary school, the junior high school, and the senior high schools that I attended. First, each was designated a high achieving school. Uh, I was bused into each school. Each was closed some years after my attendance, and I was elected student body president at each school. The correct answer is that each school was closed after my attendance. Now, there I have some uh, cougar friends who wished that the, the next school was also closed. That would have been the University of Washington, but alas, it still uh, remains uh, um, in operation um, and, uh, and very healthy. So the third question, when I was a sophomore in high school and a member of the marching band, we received new exceedingly garish uniforms because I could not yet drive. My father would transport me to school to meet the bus, delivering the band to the football games. What did I do while being transported to school by my dad? A, I carried my uniform in a bag and put it on only after arriving at the bus. I wore a pea coat over the uniform, re uh, regardless of the ambient temperature. I sat in the front passenger seat as if nothing was unusual, or I laid down in the back seat to avoid detention. It should be no great surprise that it was D. I was so embarrassed of that thing, I laid down in the back and my father laughed at me the whole way, but I just kept doing it uh, so I didn't have to be seen by anyone with those uniforms. Now, the next question. My transformative music career might have continued after high school. Where did it really go? To the University of Washington, where I played in the Husky marching band to Alameda, California, where I played in the Coast Guard band during boot camp, uh, to a garage Dixieland band in Seattle, or D, I quit, never again touching a musical instrument. Well, the correct answer is B. I went into the uh, Coast Guard uh, right out of, uh, uh, shortly after high school, um, and that was in uh, the boot camp was in Alameda, California. I played in the uh, Coast Guard band. During boot camp, I played the clarinet. I was awful, but I was good enough to stay in the band. And it periodically got me off the bass during boot camp, which was a, uh, uh, a real feather um, in, in my cap at the time. So next question. Ann and I uh, moved to Yakima in 1977. Why did we move out of Seattle? The weather, the traffic, we wanted to make our own bed in central Washington without family interference. All of the above or none of the above? The answer is D, all of the above, all of the above. And we have uh, uh, loved being here for, uh, uh, what is it, 40, uh, 40 plus years. Um, next, one of my best friends is Ken Marble, who I have known since 1979. How and where did I first meet Ken? A, skiing at White Pass, playing racquetball at the YMCA, at Rotary, or at Lama's class with our spouses? In fact, the correct answer is D, at Lama's class with our uh, uh, spouses. And as it turns out, each uh, of us, that is Ann and I on the one side and Ken and Marlon on the other, became the godparents of the firstborn of the other child and we have remained dear, dear friends ever since. Now the final question is, what are the three outside activities I most enjoy? 
A, golf, tennis, and salmon fishing. B, fly fishing, bird hunting, and snow skiing. C, hiking, running, and mountain biking. Or D, carpentry, gardening, and barbecuing. And I would suggest that anyone who knows me at all knows that my three favorite things to do are fly fishing, bird hunting, and snow skiing, which are uh, so uh, readily available here in the Acoma Valley. So that's the, uh, that's the end of the, uh, uh, the program. I want to uh, urge you all to stay well, to stay, uh, stay safe. If you are, God forbid, infected by the coronavirus, I uh, hope you immediately get better and complete recover and completely recover. I want you to know that I miss you all. I miss uh, not being able to go to the meetings. And I remind you to please send in your money to Carolyn to the extent you were fine. Uh, best wishes to you all. Thank you. Daryl Blue with our program today. Our speaker today is Jeffrey Cataret, who is a director on the board of Rotary International. And uh, Jeffrey represents the part of the Rotary world that includes the Acoma Rotary Club. <clears throat> As a little bit of background, there are 17 directors of Rotary International who each represent two zones. The zone is a big chunk of the Rotary world, uh, including all the clubs in that zone. And we are part of zone 24, which is basically uh, the country of Canada, Alaska, and a few districts like ours, which overlap the border between Canada and the United States. Jeffrey lives in a suburb of uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and is actually a member of Zone 32. Zone 32 is the state, the New England states, and the country of Bermuda. Next year, after Jeffrey's term, he will be replaced by a director from our zone who happens to live in Ontario. Well, that's a little background on the directors of Rotary International. Uh, Jeff Ketteret had a 25 year career as a physical therapist in Pennsylvania. And after retirement, joined a real estate firm in the Philadelphia area. He's a member of the Rotary Club of Media Pennsylvania and has been a member since 1977. And he served as a district governor of his district in 1998-99. Jeff is finishing out his term as he will tell you in his talk, uh, as director of Rotary International, but he's not ending his involvement in Rotary. In fact, he's taking on more new assignments. So it's my pleasure to introduce you, my friend, uh, Director Jeffrey Cataret of Rotary International. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Cataret. I'm on the Rotary International Board of Directors, and it is a pleasure for me to be here with you at the Yakima Rotary Club today. I was due to be with you in person in December. Uh, unfortunately, that could not happen, did not happen. Uh, so I'm grateful for the invitation. It's a privilege to be with you and your club. I um, have learned so much about your club, um, 325 members. I've talked to Eric, your current president, and Jennifer, your incoming president. And what you have accomplished over the past 100 years is truly remarkable in the parks and the trails and um, you know involved in a project with the YMCA for a two million dollar aquatic center and yet being overachievers you raised three and a half million dollars for that and the trust fund that you have that funds um, what I remember to be a million and a half dollars of scholarships every year uh, it's it's just remarkable what you have done to change the face of your community what you've done in Ethiopia, what you've done for the people, families, and children of your community in the world is truly remarkable. And you should be very proud. And, and I'm sorry that um, I could not have been at that party, that celebration that you had. Uh, and you have every right to look back over 10 decades and to acknowledge all that you've accomplished. My suggestion to you, is that you not linger in that place too long. That you acknowledge that first 100 years and quickly turn and look toward the next decades of your involvement in your community and in the world. Because <clears throat> all of us in Rotary stand on your shoulders. All of us stand on the shoulders of everyone who has served in your club over the past century. And that is a milestone 
that you should forever be proud of, and one that many clubs will never accomplish. But pivot quickly and look forward to what the next decades mean for you in Rotary. In December, when I was supposed to be there, this whole COVID-19 virus thing uh, was just emerging. None of us could have predicted the way this Rotary year would end. And we're all disappointed. Uh, I was on a Zoom call with 450 people uh, about 10 days ago with our president, Mark Maloney. He and I were having a conversation. And we had just had the first ever virtual board meeting of the Rotary International Board of Directors. We do that on a platform called KUDO, K-U-D-O, which allows us to do simultaneous interpretation into Korean, Italian, and Japanese. It was a hard board meeting. We deliberated for a couple of hours, and that's the meeting where we canceled the Hawaii Convention. And whether it's a district conference or a district assembly or a president-elect training seminar or a celebration for a district, events have been canceled all over the Rotary Globe. When I sat in the boardroom on the 18th floor of one Rotary Center in October, I never realized that would be my last board meeting on the 18th floor, that the rest of my term would be virtual. So the disappointment is widespread and it's understandable. And we need to acknowledge that also. And then we quickly need to pivot again to determination determination to not let Rotary go dark in North America, determination to stay connected with our members uh, uh, through vehicles like this, Zoom or GoToMeeting. So I now meet every two weeks with every governor in zones 28 and 32, all 44 of them, and every governor elect. And my goal for the next two months and 22 days is to drive connectivity down into clubs, to keep Rotary alive in North America. And so I applaud you on this effort uh, that you have of uh, recording speakers and recording individuals and bringing them to your club so that in Eric's final two months and 22 days and in the two months and 22 days before Jennifer takes over, that you can stay connected and here's what I believe. I believe that we'll come out of this stronger. Now, we don't know how many members we may or may not lose. And, and, and we've all got our fingers crossed that that's not a lot. But Jennifer, as you take over, hopefully the COVID-19 pandemic will have waned, but the economic impact, the economic recovery from that, your members who may have had their businesses affected or lost, the families in your communities, who will have such an adverse economic impact. So the finish of this Rotary year is very different than we expected. The beginning of the next Rotary year is gonna be different also, unprecedented to anything we've ever experienced in our organization. And yet, because of the members of this club, because of the leadership of this club, because of the leaders that we have in districts across Canada, New England, the Mid-Atlantic States, and throughout Zone 28 and 32. We will get through this together. And I think we'll come out stronger. This connectivity that we have now, I do four to five of these Zoom meetings a day. I think it would have taken us two to three to four more years to get to that point. E-clubs have been here for a, dec uh, for a decade and a half. They're wondering what took us so long to catch up. <clears throat> but this is one of the silver linings. To me, this is a silver lining. This means of connectivity that we're doing now will serve us well into the future. And we need to harness that. My recommendation to the president in a conversation that we had uh, was that we not let this be um, happenstance, that we take a look at the organization from the trustees to the board of directors, to our staff in Evanston, to our offices of the secretary around the world, and, and we take this hybrid, if you will, because clearly the way that we did Rotary before this pandemic needed improvement. And we were working on that, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. 
But the way that we're doing Rotary now is very different. And maybe this isn't the best way, but somewhere there's a hybrid of the way we did and the way we will do. And I think it will make us stronger. I think that we'll come out of this a stronger organization. So thank you um, to all of the members of the Yakima Club for what you do, for what you have done, but most especially for what you will do, because we will need you as we emerge from this pandemic to take advantage of the silver lining, to take advantage of how we can change the lives of children and families in your community and across the globe in a new way, in a different way, in a better way. I talked about the need for change. Sorry about that. Um, memo to me, always put your phone on silent when you speak. Um, we asked at our first board meeting under Barry Rasset in July of 18, if you were to invent Rotary today, would it look like it does now? And, and categorically, around the boardroom that day, and, and no matter where I go to speak, people shake their head no. If you were to invent Rotary today, would it look like it does now? No. Next logical question, then what should it look like? What could it like look like? And out of that came the Shaping Rotary's Future Committee. And we've been meeting for 18 months now. We have another virtual meeting coming up in May. And we started at the club level. And we looked at our participants. And what type of support did they need? And how could we best support them? And we redesigned the hierarchy, governance, and structure of our organization. And we presented that to the board at our October meeting. And they gave the committee the green light to move forward and to continue with that exploration. And so that's what we're doing, because we believe, even in spite of this connectivity we have now, there's a better way for us to do Rotary. The number one issue we have in North America is membership. And we're dealing with a structure that was designed in the 1950s, when if I wanted to talk to Daryl or Jennifer or Eric, I had to either pick up the phone a landline, not even a cell phone, probably with a party line, if you can remember party lines, or I had to mail you a letter. The means and levels and types of communication that we have today are far different than those. And now we're starting to take advantage of that and we need to do a better job. So the Shaping Rotary's Future Committee, I think um, their focus is gonna change also. That's another silver lining that we have. The council of legislation that we have coming up in 2022, I believe that there will be pieces of legislation, enactments that will be favorably looked upon post pandemic that maybe never would have con been considered without the pandemic. It's another silver lining. It's what we have to grasp hold of as we move forward. Some other things, uh, uh, you know that last year we signed a memorandum of understanding with Toastmasters International. And each of you probably knows Toastmaster best for public speaking and communications. What you may not know is that they have a very robust leadership development online module series of leadership development courses. We know that when we survey young people, that's what they tell us they want. That's one of the value propositions that they look for from Rotary is leadership development. What Toastmasters did not have was a service avenue, but we do. So this collaboration, this partnership between Toastmasters and Rotary International, we are co-branding communications and leadership development modules that we will roll out in the fall, probably initially to Rotaractors, and we'll tweak them, and then we'll roll it out to the rest of the Rotary world. Just another tool in our toolbox another value proposition for us to deliver to the members of your club, to the future members of your club, to the people that want to be a part of us. Talk for a minute about Grow Rotary. You know that Mark Maloney's initiative this year has been Grow Rotary, and that's not just a membership campaign at all. That is growing the foundation, growing our public awareness, growing our public understanding, and clearly growing our membership. 
And we think that with the work of the Shaping Rotary's Future Committee, and with the Grow Rotary Initiative, we can have an organization that's 3 million or 4 million or even 5 million members, not stuck at 1.2 million members the way we have been for the past 23 years. That helps all of us. A rising tide raises all ships. We believe that there are millions of people around the world and probably thousands of people in your community that want to be a part of us, that share our core values, that share the value propositions or want the value propositions that we deliver. And they have no way to access us. Your club meets at what time? Somebody tell me, your club meets what day of the week? Somebody tell me, what day of the week do you meet? Thursday at noon. Thursday, Thursday at noon, same as my club. And yet I'll bet there are thousands of people in your community that cannot meet Thursdays at noon. And maybe they could meet on Monday or Tuesday night or whenever but they can't meet Thursday at noon. And this type of technology that we're talking about might allow them to enter your meeting. Maybe there could be Zoom at your live meeting once we get back to that. Or maybe there are other ways. But we, what we know is that there are people in the world that cannot access, we haven't given them an access point. So now we have all different new types of access points, corporate clubs, theme-based clubs, family clubs, uh, New Voices Club, which is made up entirely of RILA graduates, 33 RILA graduates from the ages of 18 to 30 who wanted to start their own Rotary Club. And I had the honor um, last year in Maine of delivering that charter to them. We think that there can be hundreds of those New Voices Clubs across North America, maybe one in your community, who knows? And we think that we have not yet even invented the new access points that will allow people to be a part of us who right now are restricted because they can't get to us. In Houston, when the convention is there in two years, <clears throat> we're running a pilot, we're running the same pilot in Chicago at the same time. And we're gonna penetrate that market with advertising and marketing and try to raise the awareness of our organization, but not just the awareness, the understanding of our organization. And at that same time, we're gonna roll out a pilot and it's gonna be the global participant model because each of you that's listening to me right now is a member of your club. You are not a member of Rotary International. Your club is a member of Rotary International. Rotary International is the association of our 33,000 clubs around the world. The global participant model will allow someone to be a member of Rotary International. And we'll figure out what that value proposition is. And they won't be second class Rotarians. Jennifer won't be able to say, well, I'm a real Rotarian and you're not. And Eric won't be able to say, well, I'm a past president of my club and I'm a real Rotarian and, and you're just a global participant. No, 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 no. These folks will all be Rotarians. They will just access us in a different manner. And, and so your lunch club and all the breakfast and dinner clubs around the world, that got us to where we are. It's your 100 year legacy. And we need to honor that. And I, and I believe they will always be around. But we need to have a smaller rear view mirror and we need to have a larger windshield. And we need to embrace new ways for people to be a part of us. We need to honor our past and we need to retool for the future. And for that, we're gonna need your help, each of you, all of you, together. We can get past this pandemic. We can get past the economic recovery that we're gonna have. We can emerge a stronger organization and we can honor our past while we retool for the future. Because the alternative is that Rotary becomes irrelevant in North America, or that Rotary becomes irrelevant in your community if we don't look through our windshield more and our rear view mirror less. Honor our past while we retool for the future. And the last thing I'll talk about is an effort that I've been involved with for the past 12 days probably. There's a group called Global Impact they have a project called Volunteer Surge because what we know is that this 
pandemic is straining our health systems and straining a lot of our resources. And most Rotarians that I talk to say, well, how can we help? How can we help? We need to help. We want to help. And they don't know how. Volunteer Surge is a project to mobilize 1 million volunteers in the next two to three weeks. We've now rolled it out across zones 28 and 32. We started in New York first with the three governors in New York. And what that allows people to do is take a 10 hour online course to allow them to provide telesupport from their home for this crisis that we're in. For a lot of our demographic, for a lot of our members, and I would be one of those, I'm in a high risk group. And so I would prefer if I had to help, maybe to help from my home with telesupport of some kind. And that's what that training will allow you to do. There will also be, there is right now, a 30 hour online course, which, which allows you to become a certified nurse assistant and to be out on the front lines, supporting our frontline work, workers, being an adjunct, adjunct rather, to our frontline workers. If you were to go to the website, tgig.org, you can learn all about that. You can register, you can become a volunteer, and you can help with this horrendous, unprecedented, a word I never wanna hear again for the next decade, uncharted territory, two words I don't ever wanna hear for the next decade, this horrific pandemic that has, that has made its way across our globe uh, in all of the countries in our, in our world. So volunteer search, you'll be hearing more about it. We have some pretty impressive partners, Amazon, LinkedIn, CNN, the New York Times, Salesforce, Workplace, um, lots of groups that were pulled together by Global Impact. And you'll see Rotary Districts and Clubs right in that group. Because when they reached out to us, they did that because they knew that we could mobilize people. They knew that we were in communities all across North America. They reached out to me because they wanted to be in New York. And that's part of our zone. So I'm going to take a breath, stop there for a minute. It's very possible someone might have a question. Um, um, but as I finish those initial comments, congratulations on the milestone that you have reached. Congratulations on your first 100 years. Uh, Jennifer, um, you get to be the first president in the next century of your club. No pressure on you at all, none. You know, they've gotten along well for a century. Just you've got one year to keep them going, a, another year longer. Um, I hope maybe one day I get to come out uh, to be at your club, to see Daryl again, so we can compare socks. Um, but congratulations to each of you. We appreciate you. I am so proud to be a part of your team. Uh, this assignment as a Rotary International Director uh, has been a privilege and has been an honor. I showed the folks on, uh, as we're recording this, a countdown clock that I have on my phone, uh, which says that I have in my term, which means Eric has left in his term and Jennifer has left before she becomes president. Two months, 16 days, 19 hours, 26 minutes and 56 seconds. And I put that there not because I can't wait for it to be over, be to remind me of how work, much work we all have to do before 30 June midnight. So I'll stop there. Fantastic. Sorry. Thanks much, Jeff, for, for representing us and for the service you've brought to Rotary at the board level. We really appreciate it. Jeffrey, I, I just want to say that uh, it is a pleasure to be able to have you to be able to speak to us uh, remotely, uh, also during our centennial year. What we have for you is I'm going to make sure that you get uh, uh, two of our bottle of wines that we have with our own label on it. We created our own label for wow. our centennial year. And so we will send that to you. Also, just to let you know, and you know this as well, but we are a big club in a small town with a big heart. And we're doing big things, not only in Yakima, but across the whole wide world. And we want to thank you for all your efforts in being able to help us out, not only just celebrating what we've done in Rotary this last hundred years, but also giving us that, that leap into the next year of what the next years are going to look like. 
And we want to thank you very much for all of your help. And also just to let you know that you are welcome in Yakima at any time. But we hope that you would not forget about us. And remember, every time that you take a sip from that bottle of wine that you think, gosh, that's Yakima all the way. Any questions that we have that we could be able to uh, ask Jeffrey while we have him here? One of the biggest questions I've had uh, even before this pandemic is, so what are you going to do after your director? And what I've always said is, um, I don't know. Um, I want to do the best job I can do as director to serve this organization. Uh, but our president-elect, Holger Kanak, Holger asked me to chair the Rotary International Communications Committee for next year, starting July 1. So Jennifer, as you take office as president, I'll be uh, beginning my term as the chair of our communications committee. It's one of our standing committees. It's a robust committee because it has non-Rotarians on it, really high-powered talent from the marketing and public relations community. Uh, the, the communications committee oversees our website, all of our messaging, um, the Brand Center, um, all of our magazines from the Rotarian to all of our regional magazines around the world. It's a very robust committee. And my belief is that communications is key to any relationship, to any organization, and especially key for us as we move forward out of this pandemic. So I am tickled to be the incoming chair of the communications committee. I've got one for you, Jeffrey. As you are meeting with clubs virtually, are there some best practices that you're finding that are really unique and want to share? Wow, great question, Jennifer. Um, we are actually keeping a Google Docs document because now that we meet with all the governors and governors elect and we're all on these meetings, we're trying to capture some of those best practices, um, whether it's from service to fundraisers to things people are doing in this time. Uh, when we are unable to meet in person. Uh, I've, I've seen so much uh, clubs where because they can't meet in person, the members are just donating that money that they would normally spend for breakfast, lunch, or dinner and using it to buy food for health, uh, for ER nurses or for paramedics or for other uh, frontline responders. We've seen raffles, uh, online raffles. I know that you have a a biennial auction. Uh, I'm not sure if it's live or if it's online, but um, I think it's something like $300,000 that you raise with that thing every year, every other year. My goodness. Um, I think it's you'll November, see. November 21st, if you want to mark your calendar. November 21st. I will mark that down. <laughs> we'll November. get you to Yakima after all. And, and is it, is it, a, it's a live auction, is it? It is a live and silent auction, and we usually have about 700 in attendance, black tie. Wow. Who does your auction for you? Who's your auctioneer? Um, the auctioneer is a, a person by the name of Gay Godfrey. She has been at a prior auction, but it's not always the same each time. Yeah. Did you know that I'm a benefit auction specialist? Oh, no, I did not. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have not... Careful had, what you tell me. I haven't had time to do live auctions uh, since uh, this assignment, um, I used to do 10 or 15 a year live auctions for groups anywhere from 200 to 1500. Um, yeah, and, and that wasn't, I, I wasn't asking for a job, by the way. <laughs> I think you're going to be busy with your other jobs. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Jennifer, back to your question. Uh, uh, people have been really creative, really innovative. And, and, and that, again, that's that silver lining because um, what I saw back three, four weeks ago, whenever this all started, was presidents were sending out letters to their club saying, well, because of this COVID-19 thing, we can't meet right now, so we're canceling all our meetings until April 30th, period. And I, I thought to myself, oh my God, we can't do that. We, you can't just go dark because you won't have a club. Um, so that's where we started to drive this connectivity and it's working and um, a high percentage of clubs in every district now are meeting through some type of a virtual platform. Some of the other things I've seen are they're actually doing dinner meetings where they all cook and eat together. They're doing um, wine tastings together virtually. Um, just so many ways that people are having fun 
and, and not just having a rotary meeting, but having fellowship, even if it is like this, even if it is on a screen. Um, so lots of different things. That's the silver lining. We're not going to lose that on the other side of this. We're going to figure out that that's maybe something that we can just continue to do. And, and, and we need to take a comprehensive look at that as an organization so that we don't go about that haphazardly, so that we really take a look at our training, our events, our meetings, whether it's board meetings or trustee meetings, and harness this, this silver lining to make us a stronger organization. By the way, all right, I'm gonna step out of the way for a minute. Do you see that background? Yes. So that's here in my community. And, and down on the lower right-hand corner of that is my daughter's name. Because 10 years ago, when my daughter was the president of her Interact Club in high school, when I would drive her to school every day, we used to drive by that wall. It's a, it's a foundation for an old barn. And it was a graffiti wall. And, and Jessica said to me, Daddy, I want to make that a peace wall. I think that peace should be more at the forefront of people's minds. Now, it's on state-owned land. We had to get permission from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We had a uh, trade school come out and repoint the wall for us. Uh, it's now 10 years old. You can see our, my Rotary Club's logo on one side and the Interact logo on the other. It was a joint project of our club. Uh, but that was her idea. She designed um, this peace mural. Um, people drive by it every day and it helps to keep peace at the forefront of people's minds. And, and it also spawned peace walls in other communities around the country. Uh, maybe there's a wall in your community that can become a peace wall. I have a question for you about the technology here in, in large meetings and doing these district conferences as live Zoom meetings with up to 500 people. Have you been involved yet with the meeting with 500 people online? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 10 days ago, we had, I was on a meeting with 450. Uh, Mark Maloney and I had, President Mark Maloney and I had a conversation. Um, it's a lot of people. Um, you have to make sure that the host can mute everybody. Uh, there were people from all over the world on that call. Um, the, typically, the calls I'm on are anywhere from 100 to 150 people. If it's a district level call, clubs can range uh, live club meetings anywhere from 30 up to 100. Um, but it's, it's pretty amazing technology. And it, it's funny to see how quickly people have come up to speed because initially the first meeting was just telling everyone where the mute button was and how to start or stop their video and what a chat box was and how to raise your hand. Um, Uh, and, and now people are just pretty good. Um, now people are, are putting up backgrounds like the one I have. Here, let's go somewhere else here if we can. We'll go to, uh, let's go to the, we're going to go to Sedona, Arizona. There we are. Now we're in Sedona, Arizona. But if you want, we can quickly go to the Grand Canyon. Or we can take a ride in a hot air balloon. Um, it's my daughter walking. We, we hiked down the, to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and hiked back up. That's the day I almost died. Um, anyway, um, yeah, clubs are, are coming up to speed quickly with this new technology. Um, a lot of them are just doing it live. Um, you tend to record yours ahead of time and then I, I guess uh, send me the link once you've recorded this and edited out all my bad stuff, Dwayne. And, it's on, it's a YouTube channel, but the easiest way to get it is go yakimarotary.org. That's our website. And on the lower part of the front home page, there are links to videos. And you'll see the last couple of videos. And the one, this one, when it gets posted, will be the leftmost one in the list. Okay, and you're gonna edit this and make me look good, yes? Yeah, you bet, you already look good. But when I took this assignment, um, when I threw my hat in the ring um, four years ago, because the, you know, the, the opportunity only comes for each zone every four years, um, I never really aspired to be on the RI board. I was happy being a past governor and I've, I've had just the greatest opportunities 
through Rotary. Uh, just unbelievable opportunities that I've had to serve this organization. I've gotten far more out of it than I've ever given. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. Uh, my goal was to not let the role of director change me, but to change the role of director. That was my goal. Um, uh, um, I'm not the most important person in the Rotary world. Um, I will not sit at a table that says VIP on it. Uh, I am a club Rotarian with a great assignment, period. And it's, uh, it's been a privilege. Uh, I, I, I'm, on July 1, I'll have another initial instead of RID, it'll be PRID. Um, uh, you'll have another initial also. Uh, Eric, you'll have a past in front of your acronym. Um, but this has been quite the ride. And my goal was on 30 June at midnight. I can tell you that I'm going to be on a beach. I don't know where that beach will be, depending on where the pandemic is, but I will be, I will have sand between my toes at midnight. I'm going to call my successor, Valerie Wafer, and wish her the best. Dean Roars did that to me two years ago. Um, I'm going to have an adult beverage in my hand. I don't know if it'll be wine from Yakima or tequila from Mexico, but it will be an adult beverage. And I'm going to salute everyone uh, that has served, uh, that has allowed me to serve on their team for the past two years. Um, I may not leave that beach that night. I'm not sure about that yet. Um, I'm going to take a breath and then uh, get back to work. So thank you for your, uh, uh, the privilege to be with you today. Uh, it is my honor and privilege to be here with you. I appreciate every member of the Yakima Club, each person that has served your community so long and so hard for the past 100 years. But as I said earlier, acknowledge that, celebrate that, and then quickly pivot and turn and look to the next decades of how Yakima Rotary Club the Rotary Club of Yakima can continue to support your community and support our global community. Have a good day. Good luck with the next Zoom meeting. Yeah, thank you so much. Have be safe, everyone. Thank you. All righty.